Welcome to our service this morning. For our devotional this week, I thought we could take a few lessons from the life of Joseph. Angela's going to bring our Bible reading this morning from Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 to 21. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Thank you, Angela. Joseph was the 11th son of his father, Jacob. Joseph had a unique position among all his brothers. He was the firstborn son of his father's most loved wife, Rachel, and he was his father's favourite son. This favouritism, along with the prophetic dreams that Joseph had, and his eagerness to explain them to his older brothers, and he get the perfect conditions for his brothers to become jealous of him. I'm sure you remember, Joseph's brothers devised a plan to kill him when Joseph visited to check they were okay, but they eventually settled on selling him into slavery. Pretty horrible. Your own brother's selling you. Fast forward a few years and you will see that his brother's scheming actually put Joseph on a path that would fulfil his earlier prophetic dreams. Joseph did not gain authority overnight but through a series of wise actions, setbacks which were in the providence of God, Joseph eventually became second in command in Egypt, the land into which he was sold years before. Towards the end of the account, we read about Joseph, and we find that Joseph used the power invested in him by Pharaoh to provide food for all the people of Egypt and even people from other countries, including the brothers who once despised him. The life of Joseph is a testament of how God can use even the most evil actions to bring about the complex to bring about complex good. I would just like to think briefly of three lessons we can learn from the life of Joseph. First of all, patience. In our modern world, it can be really difficult to wait. If you're hungry, just get some fast food on the go. If you don't know an answer to something, you don't have to research it. You can Google it on the spot. And if you don't get a text back from somebody in five, minute, five minutes, it's pretty much like a slap in the face. We're not generally easily E easily given to patience. So imagine getting confirmation that you will one day have a position of power over the people who despise you, but being forced to wait years for it to actually happen. I'm not sure how much Joseph knew about how the fulfilment of the dream he had about the sheaves of wheat bowing down to his sheaf would come about. As we read the account of Joseph's life, 
we get the impression that Joseph worked diligently in all he was given to do. He waited patiently for God to work his purposes out. Next of all, let's think about Joseph's faithfulness. It's clear that no matter the circumstance Joseph was in, he knew that God was the one he had to stay faithful to. After Joseph was sold to Egypt, sold into Egypt, he served under a high-ranking official named Potiphar. And over the course of time, Joseph found favour in his eyes. And Joseph eventually rose to have a prominent role in Potiphar's household. And for the first time since he was sold into slavery, it appeared that Joseph was finally on track to have those dreams fulfilled. Potiphar had a wife. The Bible describes Joseph as being handsome in appearance and Potiphar's wife definitely agreed. Potiphar's wife made advances to Joseph numerous times but Joseph refused her advances and said it, the act would not only be wrong against her husband but against God himself. So after Potiphar's wife's unsuccessful attempt, the wife claimed it was Joseph that had acted wrongly against her. Potiphar was furious and it led to Joseph's hard-earned status and his innocent reputation being destroyed and he was wrongly imprisoned. As we read the account of the life of Joseph, we don't read that Joseph was disappointed he did not blame God for what had happened. Joseph wanted to please God no matter what. His faithfulness later allowed him to eventually leave that prison and gain a new position of power. Last of all, I'd like to think about Joseph's forgiveness. How could we think about Joseph and not mention his forgiveness? In Genesis chapter 43, we see Joseph's brothers, yes, the same ones who sold him into slavery. They came to their unrecognisable brother to buy grain in the middle of the famine. Joseph had every right to hold a grudge against his brothers. And with his new position in Egypt, there's no telling what kind of punishment he could have enforced. But after a series of tests and observations that showed his brother's remorse, Joseph revealed his identity to them and he later provided for his father's household. When Joseph's father died, his brothers thought Joseph would turn on them for what they had done to him. Joseph forgave them and said to them, You intended to harm me but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Before we have our songs and then the message from Graham, let's pray. We thank you, Father God, that we can come into your presence because of all you have done for us through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have dealt with our sin through, through the sacrifice of your Son and that we have forgiveness of our sins through his blood. We pray that you will draw close to us and help us to live the lives you want us to live and that we might have patience and forgiveness as Joseph did. We pray also that we might be faithful to you in all that we do. We ask, Father, that you will help us now as we hear your word, that it will lead us into a deeper relationship with our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> 